I'm Dr. Masaki Kaguchi. I'm a vascular surgeon at the MedStar Heart and Vascular Institute. My office locations include the MedStar Georgetown University Hospital, MedStar Washington Hospital Center, and MedStar Health at Chevy Chase. As a board certified vascular surgeon, I see both patients with arterial and venous disease. My training, however, is specialized in treating patients with venous insufficiency. Many of my patients with venous insufficiency present with complaints of cosmetic concerns as well as the full gamut of having venous ulcers. Patients who come see me might have visible varicose veins that are bothersome or have symptoms such as achiness, leg fatigue, and swelling in both of their legs. These symptoms can be signs of a condition called venous insufficiency. Venous insufficiency in itself is a condition that is not of high cause of mortality. However, they can lead to many causes of morbidity, including leg swelling, leg infections, and ultimately ulcers. The range of treatments I offer my patients start with compression therapy and see if their symptoms improve. And if they do not, after a trial of compression for at least three to six months, then we can offer them a treatment such as ablation therapy for their diseased varicose veins. The MHVI uses a team-based approach to treat every patient. The team is comprehensive and includes vascular surgeons, orthopedic surgery, infectious disease, podiatry, and plastic surgery. Patients with venous insufficiency often don't realize that there are treatments for their symptoms. They attribute their symptoms of just like heaviness, swelling, as just a part of life. And to be able to help them with small, minimally invasive procedures, it's quite fulfilling because they do return and say, I never knew that my legs can feel like this. Veins in your lower extremity bring the blood back from your tippy toes all the way back to your heart and back into the central circulation. To be able to combat gravity, they have to be able to do so with the help of valves. These one-way valves bring the blood back from your toes all the way back to your heart. When they don't work properly, the blood actually does not move back towards your heart and flow in the opposite direction, causing the symptoms of venous insufficiency, including leg cramps, itching, swelling, and leg fatigue. Venous insufficiency by itself is not dangerous. However, venous disease is a progressive disease and can lead to more severe symptoms that are lifestyle limiting, including ulcers. So venous insufficiency causes ulcers because the blood does not flow back into the heart, into the central circulation, and pools in your lower extremities. That pooling can cause swelling and cause pressure around the skin and allow it to break down, causing an ulcer. Family history is actually a strong predictor that you will have venous insufficiency, including varicose veins. However, Previous deep vein thrombosis, multiple pregnancies, and a standing profession are also known risk factors. In itself, it is not, but it can be, as diabetes often leads to obesity, and obesity is also a risk factor for venous insufficiency. PAD is peripheral arterial disease. This is a disease of the arteries. The disease of the arteries is often caused by atherosclerotic plaque within the wall of the artery, causing limited blood flow to your extremities. So peripheral artery disease manifests anywhere in your body. It depends on where the atherosclerotic plaque lands. If it is in your carotid artery, which is, supplies the blood to your head, it can actually manifest with TIAs or mini strokes. If the plaque manifests in your legs, it can actually cause symptoms of claudication, which means that every time you walk, you have pain in your calves because they're not getting enough blood.
Peripheral artery disease of the legs can be treated by modification of risk factors. It depends on the severity of the disease, but first and foremost, you have to stop smoking, take blood pressure medication and aspirin, and be on a supervised exercising, exercise program. Depending on the severity of your PAD, there are endovascular and, as well, open methods to treating PAD. The goal of uh, treating PAD is to restore blood flow, whether it's by cleaning the actual diseased artery or to bypass that disease segment to restore blood flow distally. A leg bypass is a surgical procedure that redirects blood from a normal artery down to another normal artery and bypassing that disease segment. RFA stands for radiofrequency ablation. It is a minimally invasive technique to treat venous insufficiency. Normally, radiofrequency ablation is used in the superficial veins that include the great saphenous vein and the small saphenous vein. The great saphenous vein runs on the medial side of your leg. The small saphenous vein runs on the back of your calf. The radiofrequency ablation involves a small needle poke in the uh, medial side of your calf. Through this, a sheath is inserted, and through the sheath, a catheter is inserted all the way up to your groin. The area is numbed up, the radio frequency is turned on, the vein is treated, and the catheter is removed. The procedure itself takes about 10 minutes to perform. The entire procedure, however, including preparation and post-op instructions take about an hour. During the procedure, you'll have minimal discomfort because of the fact that it is just one needle poke. The entire vein is treated with lidocaine and so you should not feel anything. Afterwards, the leg will feel slightly heavy due to the numbing medication that's placed and oftentimes there's a little bit of numbness or tingling involved. But other than that, you can resume your normal activities. Most patients actually feel relief within one to two weeks of treating their diseased vein. That means improvement in the symptoms of leg like heaviness, fatigue, and swelling. RFA is not a cosmetic procedure. It treats the diagnosis of venous insufficiency. It is most often covered by insurance. So although RFA is not in itself a cosmetic procedure, it does often have cosmetic benefits because once, treating, once you treat the diseased vein, Oftentimes, the varicose veins that arise from the diseased veins will um, get smaller. Follow-up includes a repeat ultrasound a few days after the radiofrequency ablation to ensure no DVT, which is a small risk to the procedure. After that, you will see me or a nurse practitioner in two weeks to reevaluate any other symptoms that might occur. So once the diseased vein is treated, the blood actually reroutes in the other non-diseased veins to go back up into the heart. There are complications to any surgical procedure, including radiofrequency ablation. These complications are rare, but they do include infection, bleeding, paresthesias or nerve injury, and DVT. To minimize these risks, we ensure sterile conditions and as well follow up ultrasounds to ensure that the patient does not have a deep vein thrombosis.
If a DVT is found after a radiofrequency ablation, we often place the patient on blood thinners. The duration of how long you need to be placed on a blood thinner depends on the extent of the clot and its location. The purpose of a compression stocking is actually to physically bring the valves closer together within the vein so that they can open and shut more effectively. Wearing compression stockings after an RFA actually helps the other healthy veins to work more efficiently. This oftentimes actually improves the outcome of the radiofrequency ablation of the diseased vein. You will always feel better wearing compressions at any time because they help the healthy veins and their valves from working more efficiently. Sclerotherapy is a medicine that is actually injected directly into the vein to agitate the vein and cause it to collapse. This is often used in large bulgy varicose veins or spider veins that may be cosmetically unappealing. It can be used for both cosmetic and non-cosmetic conditions. Some of the non-cosmetic conditions could include varicose veins or large superficial veins that are not amenable to catheter-based therapies such as radiofrequency ablation. The radiofrequency ablation catheter requires a straight segment, and so if the varicose vein that is offending may not be a straight segment, oftentimes a medicine is injected and can collapse the vein in a similar manner. Phlebitis is an inflammation of a superficial vein. It sometimes happens when there's trauma to a superficial vein or perhaps an IV was used to instrument that vein and a clot forms. It is extremely painful, but it is often not dangerous. If the phlebitis is extensive, oftentimes an ultrasound is required. Most of the time, just aspirin, ibuprofen, or other NSAIDs can be used with warm compresses to treat the symptoms of phlebitis. However, if the phlebitis is extensive, sometimes antibiotics and sometimes blood thinners are required. Bulgy varicose veins are often cosmetically unappealing, but digging deeper, you can often elicit symptoms of like heaviness, fatigue, and like swelling that may go unnoticed. If you have bulgy varicose veins, most oftentimes you will have venous insufficiency of your superficial system. Taking care of that diseased vein often relieves patients of their bulgy varicose veins. It's difficult to know the cause of leg pain. Oftentimes, we have to rule out uh, back problems, musculoskeletal problems, nerve injury, and other arterial uh, etiologies of leg pain. However, oftentimes, venous insufficiency has a gamut of symptoms, including leg pain, leg fatigue, especially at the end of the day, and swelling at the end of the day. Oftentimes, if you wear compression and you feel relief, that is an indication that you have venous insufficiency. An ultrasound can also visually see these valves and whether they function properly and whether you have reflux or what we call venous insufficiency. And that is the telltale indicator that you have venous insufficiency. The carotid artery brings blood into your brain. If this is clogged, oftentimes, you could have a stroke or a mini stroke. A mini stroke is a sign that you might have carotid disease. An ultrasound evaluation is required to diagnose um, a, a carotid artery disease. Depending on how severe it is, there is criteria to when to fix and when to surveillance. 
with repeated ultrasounds. It depends if the patient is symptomatic or asymptomatic. Symptomatic carotid artery disease include stroke or mini stroke. Depending on the severity of their symptoms and the severity of their disease, there is established criteria on when to operate on the patient. A carotid ultrasound is like any other ultrasound. Uh, it is a non-invasive way to look into uh, your organs or, in, in this case, in your carotid artery. They are able to determine how much blood flow is going from your uh, heart to your brain, and that determines how uh, narrow your carotid artery might be. They put the probe with some gel on the base of your neck, and they just take pictures. It's not painful, um, and it is not invasive. 